Hello, I'm Casey Green, and I'm thrilled to have the chance to provide a video introduction to our paper that was just published in the journal M Systems. I really like Dr. Sintyurgi's description of the process of research. And our lab fits into this because we're working to develop methods that help researchers better analyze large amounts of data. Specifically, we want to build systems that can take a fresh look at publicly available data and help raise new and interesting biological questions. This is challenging because the algorithms have to work without imposing our biases on them, but the data that we're working with are very noisy. In many ways, this challenge seems impossible. Fortunately, a graduate student who had just joined my lab, Jia Tan, was not dissuaded by the challenge. As Jia started in our lab, researchers at Google were asking a related question about online videos. Specifically, they wanted to know, if you showed 16,000 computers 10 million images from YouTube, what would they see? In their case, the algorithms found cats, as well as other common features of online videos. In our case, we're going to ask a related question about collections of gene expression experiments. We have a compendium of publicly available Pseudomonas aeruginosa data. This compendium includes about a thousand samples from about a hundred different experiments performed in many different labs. We study Pseudomonas aeruginosa because it has important implications for human health. It's often resistant to many antibiotics, and it's an opportunistic human pathogen. We performed this work in collaboration with Deb Hogan's lab at Dartmouth. The authors on this paper are Jia Tan, a graduate student in my lab, Jack Hammond, a graduate student in Deb's lab, Deb, and then myself, Casey Green. The approach that we developed to solve this problem is called Analysis with Denoising Autoencoders of Gene Expression, or ADAGE for short. ADAGE starts with gene expression data that has not been corrupted. We then add noise to the data. Now in this case, we've started with really noisy data, and we've added more noise to it. But the next step is that we train a neural network to remove the noise that we added, so that we can get the original data back. To succeed at this, the neural network needs to learn about the important context underlying the data. For instance, what strain of Pseudomonas the data are measuring, what the oxygen levels are in the experiment, and many other features. We then looked at the neural network itself to examine what it had learned, and we performed additional experiments to understand how robust the predictions from the model would be. So Google was trying to find cats in online videos, and we're really excited about this work because now we can get an idea of what the cats are in large-scale gene expression data. Basically, what are the things that we see over and over again that we really should understand? I'd like to thank you for listening to our video introduction to the paper, and we hope it will provide context as you read and hopefully enjoy our paper.